Okay, now in this section I'm going to talk about the meninges. Now what you see here in this picture here is just the sort of a cutaway section of, um, of the skull, the brain, and the meninges. This outer white layer is the skull and this inner gray layer is the cerebral cortex, so the brain. Okay, so in, and in between these are the meninges. Now, um, the meninges are connective tissue layers, three layers of connective tissue that cover the brain and connect the brain to the skull. Now, the uh, first layer of the meninges that uh, fuses directly to the brain is called the pia matter. Hold on, my brush size wasn't correct. There we go, pia matter. Okay. Now, um, this layer is, again, directly fused to the brain. And what's interesting about the pia matter is it's fused to the brain, but it has these little in-pouchings here. Now, the in-pouchings are areas that allow for blood vessels to penetrate. So arteries, penetrating arteries, and penetrating veins travel through these little in-pouchings that are known as the, um, as the Virto Robin space. And you don't need to know that term, but that's just what the space is called. Little in-pouchings for penetrating arteries and veins to provide um, blood flow to the brain tissue. Um, now in between, um, the next layer of the meninges is this blue layer here. And this um, blue layer here is the arachnoid. Um, now you notice that there is a little bit of space in between the arachnoid and sort of these little um, connected tissue um, areas. And this space has two things in it. It has arteries and veins, arteries and veins, and then in this empty space, is the space is called the I'm sorry let me write that correctly the space is called the sub there we go subarachnoid space and it is a true space and the subarachnoid space is where the cerebral spinal fluid flows okay so there is a space there that is enabled by this connective tissue that connects loosely between the arachnoid layer and the pia matter. Okay. Now the very outside matter fused directly to the arachnoid and um, also fused in directly to the periosteum of the skull is the dura matter. So that is the very outer layer. Now, you know, you hear some terms clinically. Um, you hear terms like subdural, like for instance, a subdural bleed. Now, where is a subdural bleed going to take place? Subdural bleed is going to take place. There is no, usually no space in between the dura and the arachnoid, but if you have a traumatic brain injury, you can disrupt some of these vessels here, and some of these vessels will break and bleed, and blood will get in between the dura matter and the arachnoid layer of the meninges, and that causes a subdural bleed. Now you'll also, you've also, you know, this can be fairly large or it can be fairly small. Um, the other term that you may hear is a subarachnoid bleed. Now, as you might expect, the subarachnoid bleed takes place in the subarachnoid space. So a subarachnoid bleed is when usually when there is worse trauma and it disrupts a blood vessel in the subarachnoid space and blood collects in the subarachnoid space. And sometimes there can be enough blood that collects in the subarachnoid space that it starts to compress surrounding things like it starts to encroach on the brain itself. So that is known as a subarachnoid bleed. The other type of bleeding that you can have is an interparenchymal bleed, where you actually get bleeding within the brain itself. You know, so this would be called an intraparenchymal bleed.
bleed. Okay. All right, so that should orient you to the uh, three layers of meninges, the pia matter, the arachnoid, and the dura matter, um, within that take place um, surrounding the brain. Now, I want to talk about the meninges. The same meninges surround the um, spinal cord, um, but there are some slight differences that I wanted to talk about. So again, we have the same uh, three layers here. So um, fused to the spinal cord itself, the gray matter and white matter of the spinal gray, actually fused to the gray matter of the spinal cord is the pia matter. And then there's a little bit of space here, the subarachnoid space. And then we have the arachnoid. And then on the very outside, we have the dura matter. Now, what's interesting in the uh, in surrounding the spinal cord, these layers are pretty much the same. But one very significant difference is the dura matter of the spinal cord is not fused. This here is my rough drawing of the vertebrae. This is the posterior process of the vertebrae, and um, and the vertebrae wraps around here. Okay, but you notice here that the dura matter is not fused to the periosteum of the vertebrae. There is actually a space here. What is this space filled with? It's filled with fatty tissue. And this space is called the epidural space. The epidural space is a small area um, posterior to the spinal column and it is filled with fat. It's an area where the dura matter does not fuse directly to the periosteum but it's instead filled with fat. Now remember <clears throat> just um, scooting back up to the prior picture there is no epidural space within the skull surrounding the brain because the dura matter in all places in around the brain and inside the skull is fused directly to the periosteum. So there is no epidural space. The epidural space only exists in the posterior, just posterior to the spinal column, within um, near near the vertebrae. And again, the epidural space is made up of fatty tissue in that area. Now it becomes very handy when. You, um, to know about this space if you are trying to give someone pain control because you can inject um, you can inject local anesthetic agents and these local anesthetic agents um, bathe this entire area um, and it's nicely situated to bathe the nerves that come off of the spinal column and the ones these posterior nerves here that come off of the spinal column happen to be the sensory nerves so um, because it's in the posterior part, um, it tends to numb the sensory nerves more than it numbs the motor nerves. So anyways, that is the epidural space and my quick introduction to the meninges.